everyone so we got our trash bags now on top of some of our pots and this is something we're doing today we're gonna put a lot of the trash bags now we've got pretty much went to Home Depot picked these up Husky brand heavy duty why am I doing this that's kind of what we're gonna talk about today also how we're doing it we got like a couple stations going on here you know in this section here I've been cutting them up getting them ready to then put them underneath either slide them over top or slide them underneath and then up and then tie them so i guess i can show you guys that at the end of this video we'll show you guys how to do that um, over here but i want to really talk about why i'm doing this and why i think this is going to work it's certainly not a guarantee but without a doubt my season so far has not been that great in terms of the quality of my figs you can see this is my cold on blanc that's actually ripening right now and it put out a fig today that, believe it or not, didn't really ripen all that well. It was actually pretty good. I mean, it's kind of crazy how good it was even though it didn't, it didn't ripen well, but it's not a good sign. You know, and a lot of you guys have been contacting me about, oh, my figs are either dropping or they're ripening and they're kind of shriveling up and they're kind of dry on the inside. Um, they're very different than prior years and all that has to do with water i mean there's not really a whole much else to it if you get the watering down right you're going to know ex you're going to have the right quality figs and it's pretty simple you know if you have less water you don't have enough water first off they're probably going to start to drop right like this fig here is really starting to shrivel up it's turning yellow this is a good sign it's going to fall off very soon um, Another sign of lack of water is that the figs just don't ripen properly. Um, you know, they get to the very end, like this fig here, and then they kind of look very shriveled. The skin looks a bit disheveled as well. Maybe this one down here is actually a really good representation. It's hard to tell. But they'll kind of get dry on the inside. They won't get the full flavor. They actually, in some cases, may actually fall off prematurely before they're done ripening. And this is kind of like something that happens to a lot of varieties, by the way, guys, on like the first couple figs of the year. So a lot of you guys have been asking me about this, you know, but it's possible that it's just the first few figs that this happens to. Um, you know, so I'm not going to guarantee that this is your issue or this is my issue either, but I've seen it on enough trees now to know that there is something going on here with, with these trees. It's not, an, it's not enough water. Now, the flip side here, if it's too much water, the end of the fig is gonna split. So you really need to find that balance and that's gonna give you the best quality. And I've always said, we don't wanna be watering them more than we need to. Anything in excess is going to dilute the flavor of the fig and that's 100% true. So if we can just get them watered in well, we're probably looking pretty good. I know I was pretty pessimistic in the video the other day but we've been pretty dry this whole season for the most part. So what these trash bags now are gonna do, and here's where this whole thing comes in. Now that you guys have that, that piece of knowledge before what I'm about to tell you is that these trash bags will conserve that moisture, plain and simple. Um, you know, they're, they're trapping a lot of that moisture in uh, that's evaporating. It's helping to stop evaporation. Um, you know, it's kind of acting like mulch. And I, we talked about mulch and how I wanted to put down mulch. And I decided it's just a lot of work. So what I'm gonna do on some of these trees where you can see like this one over here really just doesn't have a lot of soil. There's a lot missing in different places, too many exposed roots. I'm gonna come in here and probably fill some of that in before I put the trash bag on. But the trash bag is going to act as mulch. It's gonna conserve that moisture the only issue that I'm running, I'm going to run into, I think, down the road is that when I put these trees away in storage, is that I'm not going to really be able to water these because there's a trash bag on top. You know, I'm going to have to come in here with the, the hose and squirt the hose on these things, but I'm not going to be able to penetrate through the bag. So I'm going to have to probably take off these trash bags, add on the mulch, and then put them away for storage. So this is a lot, is a lot of work. In fact, today, just me doing this is a lot of work. And then on top of this, you know, we got the videos that are coming in every day. So it's just been a lot very recently. Um, so that's really what the goal is here, is that we're gonna conserve that moisture. 
But we're gonna not only conserve the moisture, it's gonna act like mulch in, in terms of getting a nice, consistent, even soil moisture. And I can control the moisture 100%, right? The rain comes in, it blocks out all that rain. Now, there is a few downsides to this whole thing in that the water I've noticed on top of these, if it does rain, the water sits on top of these trash bags. And therefore, when it's sitting on top of that, it's standing water. When you have standing water here, at least in this climate, you're gonna get mosquitoes. So, you know, there's a bit of a trade-off here, guys, and I don't really have the perfect answer. Um, but to be honest with you, there's a big issue later in the season, which I'll show you guys when we get there. But it just gets too cold and it gets really rainy and our fall weather really sets in here in Pennsylvania. And the quality at that point just drops off a cliff, it seems like. Um, and people, for whatever reason, like ripening figs in September and don't mind ripening figs in October when it's actually just crazy to me because a fig now or a fig in July is a huge difference in quality. So if I can get them all now, I'm so much happier but if I can also get them later at a better quality, I'll be a lot happier as well. So what I'm thinking of, again, is putting these trash bags on, and here's the theory. This isn't really proven. You know, out of all the things I've mentioned in this video, I mean, I guess you could argue with some of it, but this is probably the most arguable position that I have here, in that when the soil temperatures cool down, when it cools down outside and when it starts raining a lot more, if I can just cover these pots, maybe give them a little bit of excess heat with the bag, right? Because it's black. But also keep a lot of that moisture out. We're then going to have a lot more transpiration through the leaves. They're going to uptake more water uh, because the soil temperatures are a bit warmer. Additionally, I mean, that's not really the most important thing I wanted to mention here, but... Additionally, because there's so much water, the water has nowhere to go, right? Because there's, it's waterlogged here in the pots. That's kind of how these trees work, right? Is that they uptake water through the roots, up the trunk, through the branches, out through the leaves. And if the water has nowhere to go, where does it leave from? It leaves from the fig, and then it splits the fig. So this is like a big issue, and if, if we just have too much water when it's just constantly raining out, all the figs are gonna split. And not only are they gonna split, but they're gonna attract SWD, the fruit fly. They're gonna ferment, they're gonna spoil. We're gonna have all kinds of issues here, and it's not gonna be fun, it's not gonna be pleasant. This isn't what I spent all my time researching and doing to then have this happen to me. So by having this cover on here, we're now stopping, we're controlling 100% of the water. So if I can keep the soil moisture on the drier side, when it is actually pouring outside and it's raining for maybe four or five days straight, I think there's a good chance that I'm gonna have less splitting. We're gonna have maybe better quality, we're gonna have definitely, I think, better quality figs. Regardless if it stops splitting or not, I think that's the biggest question. And a lot of people would argue that's just not going to work, Ross. That's what they're going to tell me. Um, so we'll see. We're going to find out. Um, it's worth a shot. And I don't know if these people who have these, because this is done before. This isn't like something new, right? People have these covers on there. This is a particular system that the guy in Flemington, New Jersey, Bill, has done in the past. And this is what he recommends. And I think probably a lot of you guys maybe even have... The system of growing figs that he uses. Um, and then he puts the plastic trash bags over top, which keeps the moisture out. But I don't know if you guys, the people who are doing this, or Bill, if he's doing this at that time, are just completely stopping the water, right? Because you can 100% control the water. I can just say, all right, no more water, right? Just flip the switch on the, uh, the timer over there. And then that's it. So if I can keep these guys, if I can stay ahead of the forecast, stay ahead of the weather and realize, okay, well, there's going to be a lot of rain coming in. I'm just going to completely stop the water. We're in September now, let's say it's getting colder outside. We'll just stop it. We won't even really bother with it. And then that way, when it does rain, 
the pot, the soil is already kind of on the drier side and it doesn't matter. I don't really have to water them because they already have all this water coming in from the rain, keeping the trees cooler and they don't really need to uptake any water. So for that reason, I think it's probably better just by that little scenario there. I think it's 100% going to be better. But again, like I said, this is a really arguable position because this has been done already. But I don't know how closely these people have been watching the water in the soil. I mean, that's like the biggest question, right? With any tree. And you know, that's like, you know, you can make an argument about splitting. You can make an argument about rain resistance, about soil moisture, but it's like, where do you guys live? What is your, what is your microclimate? You know, what is the little details that you're using to make this work? Um, and I'm willing to find out. I'm willing to push the envelope as far as possible here to get this whole thing to work. So I think the basics of what I just did with this, let me just show you guys really quickly with the trash bags. Get the Husky brand. I think this is probably the most, the thickest in millimeters uh, trash bag. So this is gonna last. Um, that was my goal, was to try to find something that would cover the top that was cheap and it would be durable and hopefully easy to take on and off. And so far, I think it's a bit of a pain to get them on and get them off. Um, Cause I'm gonna have to do this again. I'm gonna have to come in here, believe it or not, <laughs> I'm gonna have to come in here and take all these guys off again uh, before storage, put on the mulch and then put them away in storage. And I think that's just a lot. But at the end of the day, I guess these are durable and they're cheap. I think this whole thing here for about 100 trash bags, 50 trash bags, I think was $25 if I'm not mistaken. Um, again, the Husky brand and you want the, I think this is the, nothing's tougher here. What is the exact? Okay, heavy duty three milliliter or milli, millimeter, I guess. Um, but anyway, this I found through research to be the thickest one. And then you've got yourself a long trash bag. And what I do is they have these flaps on the top here to tie it, which is a nice little way of, uh, of tying it up on the top here above the pot, wrapping it around the trunk. But the bottom half, cause I've cut the whole thing in half. So here's the bottom. Let me zoom out a little bit here for you guys. So we can cut it in half right down here. This is the top and this is the bottom. So by cutting it in half right here, we then ha now have an entrance this way and also on this way. But then on the bottom, because the bottom of a trash bag is sealed, you have to cut this. And then we make a nice little cut actually down the side to create a nice little flap. And then this creates these. And this is really all it is. So I'm gonna come in here before I take this out and I'm gonna snip this all the way down here to just cut out the bottom of the trash bag. Now I have this cut in half, which if you think about it lengthwise is probably a foot and a half long, maybe even two feet. I'm not exactly sure, but cer excuse me, certainly this is enough to cover and tie up the top here and cover most of the pot. And not only are we covering most of the pot on the plastic, but I think what's really key is to cover up the pot on these grow bags. And these are just pots that I'm trying to get away from here, guys. Because the, the rain, when it rains, it not only enters the top of the pot on the grow bags, but it enters through the side. So this can really create an issue for you if you're really trying to keep that moisture out. Grow bags are not really the answer. They, uh, they dry out quickly, but they also take up a lot of water quickly. So for me, I think they're honestly the worst idea imaginable for trying to keep water out, but um, you can always protect it with the, with the trash bag. And then if I bring you guys over here, very simply, we'll just put one of these on and uh, show you guys how to do this just very quickly, hopefully. All right, so come in here, lift this up, and then really it's just sliding this underneath. And again, you could slide this over top Sliding it over top is really going to be difficult if you have a large canopy. Your tree has a large canopy. 
And again, this is really nice that these are so thick because I'm really tugging on this thing. And this could very easily rip. So there we go, we got it on top. And now I'm gonna bring you guys up to the top view here to show you what's going on, hopefully. All right, hopefully you guys can see what's going on here. And then we're just simply going to tie this with the slits we made. See these little slits? That's the cut we made on the bottom end. And then come in here and just tie this. The only issue I have with tying this one, for one, there's two trunks, and then actually there's a tree right here, a really small tree that I just stuck in this pot. So this is not really, this is not really working out with this one because I have three trunks. I have a really small tree. But what I'll do is, I'll just leave this on here. This will provide some sort of cover. Maybe I can tie a portion of this. I don't have to tie the whole thing, I guess. But ideally, you wanna cover the whole top of the soil here. Keep that moisture constant. The moisture level constant, I should say. And hopefully keep out a lot of this stuff. And then what you can do with the, believe it or not, with the drip irrigation, you can actually stab it through the plastic and have it underneath the plastic. And it, it kind of works out well, I think, doing it that way. So anyway, everyone, that was really this whole video. I, uh, I wish there was a better way. I wish there was a better uh, alternative, but I can't think of one. And I really think this is worth doing. Um, it's going to help me out now, which I've been really struggling again, like I said, with the consistent moisture because it's been so hot. These pots have been drying out pretty quickly with no mulch on top. That was the big mistake this year. Honestly, taking off the mulch is important in the spring and then you got to add it back on. It's just, it has, it has to happen. Um, so we, we kind of skipped that, we got lazy. But then coming in here late in the season around now when it starts to start raining, or maybe even in September, come in here with these trash bags and put this on. And I think this could become a permanent part of my techniques for getting high product, well, getting high quality figs out of these uh, potted figs. So, at least in this climate, guys. All right, everyone, hopefully you, hopefully you enjoyed this and you learned something. You know, again, I don't know if this is gonna be the answer for everybody, but certainly here for me, I think there's a very good shot that this is gonna work and we're gonna see. I've seen it sort of last year work in certain ways when the soil was a bit drier, when it really rained, I didn't get any splitting and I didn't get any splitting until September 6th or so. So that's why I'm thinking this is gonna work. All right, everyone, take care. We'll see you soon. See you for tomorrow's video.